There's a restaurant. It, it's just up the street from my office that has a machine. It's called a Coca-Cola Freestyle that lets people build their own soda. You, know, you, you tell it the type of soda that you want and what kind of flavoring you want, and it mixes the soda you selected into your cups. You know, you, I mean, you can go traditional with you know the classic cherry Coke, or have something you know kind of more avant-garde like an orange Dr Pepper. If the machine has 13 different types of soda and nine different flavorings, how many different drinks can the machine make? Now, this question kind of shows the problem with our tree diagrams. You know, the short answer is a lot. And trying to make a tree diagram would take quite a bit of time and paper. Also, when you start to make lists that big, trees that big, the possibility of making a mistake somewhere in the process starts to increase. And that's one of the things that our tree diagrams were supposed to help us prevent. So if we're going to handle problems with bigger numbers like the freestyle machine, then we're going to need some better tools. Now, let me ask a question here. Suppose you need to go from Tampa to Louisville. And you can do this by one of three different plane flights or by choosing one of two rental car options. How many different ways can you make the trip? Uh, I, I want you to think about this for a minute before you continue reading and see if you can come up with a number. This brings us to our first counting rule. The addition rule says, if a single task can be done in one of M ways or one of N ways, and the two sets of ways have no options in common, then there are a total of n plus m ways to do the task. So to see how you use this rule, let's walk through all of its parts and see how it applies to our travel question. First, remember what our question is. is how many ways can we travel between these two cities? And the question tells us that we have exactly one task or choice to make. It's picking a way to make the trip. That's the first part of the addition rules definition that, that I've highlighted in bold up at the top of the screen. Now, second, there are two groups from which we can make our choice. We can choose either planes or rental cars. That's the second part of the addition rule. And third, none of the options in the first category, the plane choices, is also in the second category, the car choices. Now, because all of those requirements have been met, we can use the addition rule to find the number of, of total ways to make the trip. Because there are three options in the first group, the plane flights, and two options in the second group, the rental cars, the addition rule tells us that the total number of travel options is three plus two or five. And this is a case where we can actually confirm the result by listing all of the possible options. We have plane flight one, plane flight two, plane flight three, rental car one, and rental car two. So you can see that you know, there, there really are five possible travel options. Now, at first, okay, this rule might seem a little trivial to you. And while it doesn't get used as much as the multiplication rule, it, it's definitely a tool that you need to have in your toolbox. There are going to be times when we run across problems that can be simplified by breaking them up into two smaller problems whose results we can, we can easily calculate using other methods. Then we can get the final answer by adding those two individual results together using the addition rule.